say, I usually pride myself on really paying attention to details. My favorite thing to do is to make Pinterest boards and like I'll just examine things so closely. Like, I have so many Pinterest boards for different dresses I make because I want to get the details right. And on this one, I'm very annoyed. So first of all, the blouse that she wears, the fabric is like a dotted Swiss dot kind of sheer looking thing. And I know my Joann's sells it, but I could not find it anywhere. It wasn't in stock. So instead I have this one, which it's close enough. It is like a linen kind of sheer-ish fabric. And it was dark white, but I noticed that it's not like a totally white blouse she wears. It's kind of dingy. I don't know if it's blue or if it's just a dirty white. First I dyed it almost like a really, really light teal color and it was too greenish. So I removed the color from that and I redyed it with kind of gray and purple. And now it's just like a dingier looking white and I think it matches much better. And then the leather, at first I was just gonna use duck cloth, but then I was like, no, it's leather. So I should use leather. And then I was like, I can't find that tan leather. But then I realized I think the whole thing is painted not just the design. So I have this fake leather that we're going to paint the corset with. And then of course I have all of my tools. And one thing you'll notice if you zoom in really close is that the tool, at first I had got cotton and I already cut this out. I had got cotton because I thought it was attached to that, but then I realized no, it's attached to other netting. And so if you zoom in really closely, you'll notice it's like polka dot netting. And my Joann's said they had seven yards in stock, but I couldn't find it anywhere. And whenever you can't find something in store, they just tell me like, oh, we must not actually have it, even though it must be somewhere. It says they have seven yards of it. So anyway, I couldn't find the polka dot mesh I wanted. So we're just gonna use normal mesh, but it's gonna be layered over the cotton. So I think it's gonna be fine. It's just gonna be a half circle skirt that we're gonna attach the ruffles to and not a lot of gathering and about 30-ish inches long. So I'm gonna cut a half circle skirt really quick and then we can start on the ruffles. This is what it's looking like. And I think I am right on the money about what it's supposed to look like. This is the cotton with the tool kind of mesh stuff over it. And so I think once the ruffles are attached to this layer, it will look exactly like it. The ruffles are gonna be hard because you need to pay attention to the fact that they're not all the same length. Like the ones on the bottom are longer than the ones on the top. And so I need to do some math. It's been really hard getting the spacing down on this, but I think I have the very first layer of tool attached and it's about as good as I'm gonna get it. And so now I wanna work on the next one. I don't have enough of this for the next layer because I switched up my plan for which color I was gonna use. And this, I only have a yard of it and I need several yards. So I'm trying to decide what to do because I can't go out and get more right now, but I'm in the groove working on this. Since tool is very finicky and like it moves around a lot, I pin it down onto my floor so that it's not gonna like get destroyed if I accidentally touch it since it like sticks and stuff. And I went to the store and I picked up more of this color and I sewed it up. And now I think this ruffle is enough so we can go ahead and keep attaching them. this ruffle ready to sew. I'm pinning it into place right now. I don't know about anyone else, but I have been listening to the the like Hunger Games movie album non-stop. It's so good. If you guys haven't listened to the album, go listen to it. There's songs from the movies, but then there's also just like the credit songs in there too. And it's such a vibe and it's fun to listen to while I'm preparing this. But other than that, nothing much is going on. It's kind of a redundant process. It's quite boring of a process. Just ruffle, pin, sew, ruffle, pin, sew. And I've kind of gotten the pattern down. So it's been easier to just pin them in place. And it looks like I'm running out of room, but I'm pretty confident I'm not. I think as the ruffles get smaller, I, I think I'll have enough room, hopefully. If I don't, I don't even know. So I've noticed that my ruffles are excessively poofy and hers are like very flat. So I'm steaming this tool, I'm like halfway done to see if maybe that flattens it out. And I think it is, but I think I'm also gonna go through once it's all done and iron it down on like the lowest heat setting so that it doesn't melt. Because right now it's like really fluffy and hers is not that fluffy at all, but it is tool, which I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So yeah. I'm so tired of working with tulle, so I'm going to work on the underskirt. You can tell from pictures that I think she has multiple skirts on, like a petticoat maybe, and I might add one of those depending on if I can get this to be even less poofy, but you will also notice that I think it's on the skirt directly under the tulle one. It's kind of this tannish color, and I'm pretty sure there is like some lace on the hem, so I have this cotton in a half circle skirt like this, and 
And I have this lace that I'm going to add to the hem to kind of match that one. And I'll be glad to get this off my hands because it's I've had it for forever and it takes up space and I'm running out of space. I did not really film a lot of the ruffle process simply because it was so boring. Like y'all don't want to see that. I've been sitting here for days and hours just ruffle and sew, ruffle and sew, pin, ruffle, sew. But I did just finish the, adding the last one, thank the heavens. And I'm really pleased. I dare say that the spacing and like length of each ruffle is perfect. The only thing I'm concerned about right now is that look at how puffy this is. Like the tool is tooling, it's puffy. And hers is very flattened. I tried steaming it like I said, and that was kind of working. I think I'm gonna take an iron to it at the lowest setting and I'll let you know how that goes just so that we can flatten this down because it's a lot, but I'm very pleased with it. I think ironing it did help. I'll do a little bit more when the skirt is assembled. I made kind of a makeshift pattern for the corset and I'm going to cut out the leather pieces upon examination it looks like it's like a, um, a corset underneath it almost looks purple-ish and then the leather pieces are like sewn on top of it it's not like a layer of leather it's like the piece pattern piece was cut out and on the finished corset once the base was sewn together it was like stitched on and then bound together that makes zero sense but it makes sense in my head so i'm cutting out pieces right now of this leather that i will be painting once it is all assembled and i have a lot of extra so if i mess up it's all good i I have more so I don't need to worry about that. I had this purple, I think it's like poplin or something on hand that we're gonna use. And then I have this cotton drill duck canvas stuff layer. And I think what I'm doing, going to do is lay this on top of each other, uh, wrong sides together like that. And then I'm going to stitch them together to make boning channels, not on the seams because the leather is gonna get sewn. So I'll do one, do them like in between the panels, but there's not gonna be any bones near the seams. Okay, so I have the base corset, which is the purple one. And then these leather pieces, which are gonna be painted i'm placing them on top and then they're gonna get stitched down and i'm pretty sure that's what they did i need to add the piece up here still but i was just making sure that these all kind of fit together because before i sew them down i'm gonna paint them the base like nudish kind of layer and then i'm gonna sew it down and then do the details <laughs> I've been having trouble painting the leather pieces and so I posted a video on TikTok about it and somebody suggested that I use spray paint. So that's what I'm doing. I got this one. It's just like a normal ivory color and I think it's working. So here's what it looks like. This is a couple coats on top of the paint and it's still not totally covered. Here's some mess ups right here. So I'm gonna do a couple more coats, but then I think it will be good. I spent the entire afternoon, several hours, sketching this onto the powder piece of my pattern. I said I was no artist, but I'm pretty dang proud of this. Very good, perfectly mirrored. Why are you laughing? What? What? And now it's time to transfer it onto this. And I'm not too pleased with how this painting is coming out so far. I came up with this new method of, I was basically finger painting. It was a lot easier than using the brush. I'm gonna even it out and make it look better, but I'm gonna start on this first. It, it'll look better once it's all painted together. So I have this and I'm going to transfer it to this. And then of course I also have the side panel thing done as well. So I'm gonna try transferring it over. It's drawn in pencil and we'll see how it goes. That's about as successful as I thought it would be. Now I'm gonna go through and retrace it to make sure all the lines are clean and then tomorrow I'll start in the painting. Hello everybody. So I just woke up a little less than an hour ago. Uh, sorry. As you can see, I've got my beautiful design on this bodice. And you can also see that I've binded it halfway. Um, and I had a little bit of change of plans. My original plan was that I was going to finish it off, do the binding after everything was all said and done and it was all painted because I felt like 
it'd be easier to not to worry about painting the binding on accident. But my dad's gonna hate me for saying this. He has colonoscopy today and I'm the lucky one that gets to be his driver. And apparently you need to have a driver sit there the whole time to take you home. Like I got to sit there for a couple hours and at first I was gonna bring my knitting. And then I was like thinking, cause I wanted to be productive cause I've been in a really productive mood and I didn't want to let this damper my morning. So I decided last night, I was like, oh, I should put the binding on halfway so that I can hand sew the rest of it while I'm waiting in the hospital or wherever it is you get a colonoscopy done. <laughs> I don't even know. Because normally for binding stuff, I am so lazy and I'll do it with a machine even if it makes it look slightly messy. But you really should be hand sewing it onto the inside so that you really don't see any stitches. It just looks seamless. So I guess that the colonoscopy is a good thing because, well not for him, but for me, because I'm gonna actually do it the proper way. I have two hours probably. I don't think it will take two hours, but yeah, I'm going ahead and doing things out of order and we're gonna bind it in the hospital. I'm assuming I can bring in my needles and stuff. I actually don't know. But that thing is like in an hour, so I need to get ready for everything and then pack this up and I'll see you at the hospital. It could go tighter probably. It's already pretty tight though. Like it's pushing out my fat, which that's what happens when you do it tight. Like you see this? In case you're wondering, colonoscopy, my dad was drugged. I probably should have left him at home. I'm gonna go home right now and check on him. Hey guys, so uh, we're painting the thingy right now and my sister wanted to do it. She's more artistic than I. She probably won't do the whole thing because I'm on a deadline. I don't think she would work as fast as me, but. I actually did most of it, but she had higher quality paints. So we're using her higher quality. Most of it? Yes. Are you did like a base? What have you done so far? Um, you know how that is? Yeah, that was my first coat. You're doing a second coat. Mine would have looked like that too. Mm. Look, the ones that's wet is what you've done. I did everything else. Wow. Looking pretty good. Van Gogh. I think once you have, once we have like the black outline, I think it will really bring it together. So we're working on this and I want to finish it tonight. Well, it has been a month. No, two months since I last filmed and worked on this dress. I think I worked on it so hard for like a whole week, nonstop, especially the skirt was so much work that I stopped working on it because I also had some sponsor projects I had to get done and I never came back to it. But I made an entire Anastasia dress just now, which this video should be up already. And now that it's over, before I start anything new, I want to finish the project I left off. So I'm going to finish it hopefully in the next couple of days and do the blouse. But I think I was just so tired of doing it because I worked on it so much and I never got around to it because it's February 1st. <laughs> and I last worked on it in November when the movie came out. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's okay. I was going through and editing the footage I had taken in November to get this video up and watching it through, I don't know what I was thinking filming it. It was so inconsistent and it just, the timeline of everything doesn't make sense. So I apologize. I don't know why I was so bad at filming, but I am gonna work on the blouse today. I remember I showed y'all this fabric and I'm going to make it. I'm also kind of dreading it because the sleeves have smocking and a lot of embroidery that I need to figure out. And I can't remember how to do smocking. You have to like use elastic thread or whatever, but we're gonna make a peasant blouse essentially and kind of wing it. So that's what I'm trying to do today before I start any new projects. This is the basic peasant blouse. It's like a rectangle. You cut out the armholes. These are the sleeves. I don't really know about the sleeves. I'm kind of winging it, hoping for the best. I do need to either go to the store to get elastic thread or I might have some somewhere around here. I think I'll assemble this first, but I don't know if it'd be easier to smock the sleeves before I sew it onto the bodice. I don't know. I don't even know how to go about this, really. I've sewn these pieces together. It's always so funny to me before elastic is added to these types of things because like it just doesn't look like it's going to fit but once you add the elastic it'll cinch it a little bit and I cannot find elastic thread anywhere which you need to do like the shirring on these sleeves so I need to go out to the store I don't want to do that but I have to 
So I decided, oh, I'll just sew it together and it might make it a little hard to do the shirring, but I don't, I don't care. So next we need to add the casing so that we can do the elastic. Basically, I'm gonna serge the top and then we'll sew it down and put elastic in there and it should be really easy. I did come and get elastic thread. I didn't have any. And then for the embroidery on the sleeves, it's kind of hard to figure out what color it is. So I got these three colors. I assumed that close enough is good enough. <laughs> so it's like this darker purple, a lighter pink, and then one that's kind of the color of the fabric itself. So I think I'm actually gonna be able to finish this today. And probably not the embroidery part. I'll probably work on that tonight and tomorrow, but we're gonna try out smocking. I've tried it once before and it was a big failure, but I have to be able to do it this time. So <laughs> let's figure it out, I guess. If you don't know what the shirring is, basically you need this elastic thread. It's really thin elastic and you need a bobbin. And basically this acts as your bobbin thread instead of actual thread. You do have to hand wind it and then you put it in the machine and supposedly it will make the fabric bunch up when you sew. apart and redo them but because I had sewn them together and then I realized that the shirring doesn't really work unless you sew it flat and then sew it together so that's what I did I kind of deconstructed this sleeve and I have both of them done so now next step is to sew them back together serge them up and then this entire thing is done minus the fact that I need to do the diamond embroidery but like the actual like it's wearable once I sew up these sleeves and I also need to iron them because the steam from getting the elastic hot will like shrink it even more, which is what we need. Sure. 